2012. Fisker Karma. He was designed by uh, a gentleman by the name Henrik Fisker. And they were built in Finland by a BMW uh, plant up in Europe. The technology inside, which is what I mean by that, is the uh, powertrain is is 100% American. Built and designed by a company. Well, it's not actually a company. It was designed by DARPA. They do projects for the government. That's I'm talking about the powertrain, but the the rest of it is was designed by Henry. He goes uh, 0 to 60, he was assigned to do 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. And he will go as fast as 125 miles an hour. But if you uh, get an upgrade well, on the software, then they open it up. This one will do 4.4, .4, uh, 0, 0 to 60 in 4.4 .4 seconds. And it will do 197 miles per hour. That's as fast as it will go. It has uh, two electric motors in the rear, uh, 185 kilowatt hour each. The torque is 926 pounds of torque. It has 406 uh, horses. It has a uh, a 2.0 gas engine made by GM, turbocharged. It has 22 size rims. The only vehicle on the market that it counts with 22s. You can put whatever you want on it, but this one was designed with 22s. It's pretty low to the ground, as you can see. It has Brembo brakes. This particular model has only like, I think, 8,972 miles. I, I usually don't drive it. This is where you put the gas. Right there. And here's where you charge it. Look at the inside. Oh, this is the uh, solar panel. Some people ask me, hey, will that charge the car? Nope. What it, what it, yeah, what it was designed for was to uh, run the uh, auxiliary system inside, like the air condition, the heater, the windshield wipers, and your lights. That's kind of what, what it does. It charges like a regular battery, like on a car. You know what I mean? Look at the inside of it. The inside kind of remind me of a Panamera, made by Porsche. I don't know if you've ever been inside a Panamera, but that's kind of remind me of. It's red, red in the middle. That's where the batteries are. They run all the way to the back, and they come. Let me show you. They come all the way to the front, right there. It doesn't have a. A transmission. The gas engine, what it actually does is whenever you need electricity, when the batteries are, are about maybe 7%, the engine kicks in. And what the engine does is just recharges the battery because the engine is connected to, uh, let me show you. You won't be able to see it, but let me show you what it looks what it looks under the hood. Because some people don't, don't even know what, you know, what they look like. See that? It's got a 2.0 turbocharged GM uh, engine. And the uh, generator is right in there. Right, just right behind the, uh, the engine. Right. So when the engine kicks in, all it does is generates, I mean, it spins the generator, which, as you can see, when the generator is spinning, it creates electricity. 
and then recharges the batteries. I put a turbo blanket here because the only thing that I noticed that it was kind of, I don't know, I just wasn't satisfied with it. You see the electric box here? So in the turbo is right there, right here. So whenever the engine kicks in, the turbo, as you know, gets pretty hot. And this was getting a little warm, just a bit. But it's already been insulated, as you can see. But I wasn't satisfied with that. So I figured, hey, I can put a turbo blanket on it. And so far, it, it works. It doesn't get warm or anything. It's just cool as it should be, especially with electronics. Ele anything had to do with an electrical systems has to be cool, as cool as you can get it. This has a cooling system for the batteries, the same as Tesla. So anyways, let me bring it down so, hey Lily, that's one of my cats, what up girl, bring it down, to bring it down you gotta, you gotta lock it on this side and then go to this side and lock it otherwise, see, the other side is not gonna lock. Anyways, this was my dream car. I saw it for the first time in 2011. And I didn't get to meet Henry because by the time I got up where they had it, Henry had already left. But I talked to one of the salesmen and I told him, hey, whenever you get a chance, call me and I might buy one from you guys. So, don't get me wrong, I drove Tesla, the P85D, which is a high performance one. That they had this is cool the the trouble with that is that once your batteries go dead and for whatever reason you end up at a place where you don't have a place where you can charge it then you kind of well you know and on this one you put gasoline in it and you can just run it as far as you want to go same as a BMW i8 BMW has the same concept. The only difference between this and the BMW is that the BMW uses a three-cylinder engine and it doesn't have a transmission the same as this one, which is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's called serial hybrid. That means the engine has nothing to do uh, with transmission or the engine has nothing to do trying to uh, or propelling the, the vehicle. Because like I said, the engine kicks in, spins the generator, and the generator creates electricity and charges the battery back up. The only thing I don't like about the car is that everywhere I go, well not everywhere I go, but some places that I've been, people want to talk to you. It's kind of cool, don't get me wrong, I mean, you know what I mean? But I'm not that type of guy that, you know, wants to be showing it off like some people have. That I noticed they do. No, no, I don't mean this car, like other cars, like a Ferrari or whatever, you know, whatever it is you got. I don't, man. I bought it not to show people off or to, or to pretend that I have a lot of money. Nah. I bought it because that's what I wanted. I'm not rich. I just have a great job. And I do okay. The vehicle is about to be paid. I only have one more payment and I'm done with it. Actually, I did the payment about yeah, maybe 20 minutes ago, so I'm cool. And more than likely, I might buy another one, but not not a a a, a, a car. My uh, Fisker is already building another car called Emotion, and it's pretty awesome. The problem with that one is going to be a hundred and I think he's going to ask 160 thousand bucks. Oh, I don't know if I want to spend that much money on a car, but hey, I might. This one, if I trade in, I can get like sixty-five thousand for it if I want to sell it. They, uh, I went to um, GM here in in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, which is Cadillac dealership, uh, and they told me, "Hey, man!" I mean, they asked me if I wanted to trade in for a Cadillac. I said, "Nah," and then I just for the hell of it, I asked them, "So, what can I get for it?" And they, you know, they checked it out and this and that, and go, 
We'll give you 65 for it. I told him I'll think about it. Fuck that, man. I, I mean, I don't have anything wrong. I don't have anything, anything against Cadillac, but fuck that. I ain't buying a Cadillac. You can't compare a Cadillac to this. You just can't. Unless you're blind. Anyways.